Alright guys, I'm back for more Assassin's Creed Revelations. Don't know why the recording's out there was screwing up, but whatever. I mean, I pressed the button to stop the recording, but for some reason it didn't really take. I am a weak, simple man. Not important. So wait, is the viewpoint where I'm supposed to go? Trying to figure out why they changed the button to sync. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh yeah, for some reason I have, a, I have a memory that keeps coming back to me from when I was in 6th grade. My English teacher, um, I, don't, I don't know why, uh, when, it was for some writing assignment I think, for some reason he, he pulled me aside I think to talk to me for a brief second about something. And he, the, the thing that's coming to my mind is his voice saying, you're used to being babied, as in, like, I think what he thought was that, um, in terms of, I think, needing, like, uh, I don't know, the way, 
the way that I was used to doing shit was knowing what exactly to do and when, you know, in school. You're kind of raised sort of to have that uh, as a part of your person. But um, for some reason, he, he, he assumed to me, he assumed to know me that he, he literally said, I'm used to being babied, and I can't exactly remember why. I think it was because, like I said, we were doing some assignment. And, uh, there was something, some bullshit about, uh, about, uh, I guess I wasn't exactly, I didn't exactly know what to do, so he thought that that was me being used to being babied in terms of that, and I, I remember so clearly the, myself thinking, that's not what I, that's not what was going on at all. I just, I don't know, I think it was that I didn't have enough instruction on what he wanted us to do or some shit. I don't know. I didn't... I didn't exactly explain it to him at the time. But then again, I was a different person back then, so... Like, in middle school, you would not... If you knew who I was in real life, and you know me now... Yeah, two different people, basically is the thing I'm talking about here. It wasn't until high school where I really became the person I am now, so, you know. Let's see. But yeah. For some reason, that keeps coming back to my mind. Uh, can't explain it. And don't don't shit on that English teacher, by the way, if you do in the comments. Uh, he was an okay guy. He or is an okay guy. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, kind of assumed who I was, you know. Like, yeah, that was the thing. I didn't have enough instruction on how to do whatever the fuck writing assignment we had that week. Or that day. So I was struggling a bit to know what the hell he wanted us to do. And I th he just assumed, basically. But, I mean, I don't know. The educational system is fucked anyways. It's been fucked for years, so I don't know what to say. Uh, I remember my 12th grade English teacher. She... not a good teacher at all. And again, maybe that's because I, uh... I was bored constantly. In, uh, in that class, I was constantly, uh, bored. Because it was right before lunch. It was, it was fourth period. Yeah, lunch was fifth period for us. And, uh, <laughs> like, 11 in the morning, too. Like, 11.20 or some shit. And I was still tired because uh, I didn't manage my sleep schedule that well in high school. Every day would be, like, I'd get, like, six hours of sleep and then constantly get fucking migraines. Yeah, and you don't, you don't want a fucking migraine. You fucking don't. Trust me. It hurts like a motherfucker. And it's just a constant pain.
But yeah, uh, I did not like my 12th grade English teacher. As a teacher. I... Yeah, really? Can't paddle this shit? Ah, uh, fairy dude. Fairy dude, need you. Look at him, he's shining. Of course he's a fairy. And he's a fairy who's a dude. There's nothing wrong with that. So sometimes in classes in uh, English in high school, I would be bored. Like for for the for the books that we sometimes had to read. Like in twelfth grade, well, actually no, eleventh grade, we had to read The Great Gatsby. Boring as shit. I don't like that book. Uh, I doubt I'd like any of any movie that is based on the book. I. Boring as shit. The characters are terrible people, which is the point of the book. Uh, but it's not that good. It's not. I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not sorry to say that. Uh, the book is fucking boring as shit. You know, nothing happens for uh, nothing happens that's any in of any interest to anybody for great lengths of time. And, um, uh, what else? Um, it's just, it's just a real pain of a book to read. And also, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, kind of boring, more intriguing than The Great Gatsby, but still kind of boring. I doubt I'm the only one who thinks that, either. <laughs> just look, up a, look it up on TV Tropes. Uh, it's like... It's some trope uh, where a book can, a piece of liter literature in book form can be seen as uh, art by some people, but not by others. I can't remember what that trope's called, but just, yeah, go look it up. But yeah, it's, uh, um, One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest, still kind of a boring book, to be completely honest. Yeah. I've heard the same about who wrote, uh, not who wrote Holden Caulfield. Uh, <laughs> that's the Green Day song. That song is actually pretty good. Uh, what, uh, what the fuck is that book called? The book, uh, that the guy who killed John Lennon read. I can't, uh, Catcher in the Rye, that's it. I've heard that book's boring. Then in college, for an English class, I had to read um, The Handmaid's Tale, you know, the one that the Hulu series is based on, or that the Hulu series is based on. Uh, I think I said that. For some reason, I thought I said who. Uh, anyways, um, boring as shit book. I, the writing could have been a lot better. Like, the situations were interesting, or could have been interesting, had they be written better. You know, it didn't hold my attention for long, and I kind of failed that class because I didn't pay attention to that book. The book didn't hold my interest for what it, for any reason whatsoever, or in any way. Oh. <laughs> 
But yeah. Speculative fiction is okay, but I I just found the book boring. Its premise was good. I was intrigued mostly by the premise when I heard our teacher describe it, describe the story of the book. Because if if you don't know, The Handmaid's Tale takes place in a future society where most men and women, I believe, or just at least the men, I don't know, are infertile. Gender roles have been radically uh, pushed back. Oh, shit. That is not what I meant to do. Anyways, yeah, uh, gender roles have been radically uh, shifted. Got back the fuck here. Fucking serious. Anyways, gender roles have been seriously shifted uh, backwards in terms of development. And then uh, this uh, woman, uh, she, she has her own name. I can't remember it, but I can only remember, I guess, what would be her slave name or some shit like that. Uh, off red because she's basically in sex slavery. Basically, if a if you're deemed fertile in the society that is depicted in the book, uh, you are pretty much a you are pretty much assigned to a couple, and the man of the relationship, the physical man. <laughs> I don't. I don't think trans people were even a thing back in the eighties. <laughs> At least not not in like mainstream shit. Anyways, um, so let's see. There's um, it's like uh, they're assigned to a couple, and they're they're called handmaidens. That's why it's called the Handmaid's Tale. Uh, I believe, and um, I believe that's why it's called Handmaid's Tale. Anyways, uh, so they're assigned to a couple, and, uh, the man has to get the, uh, s the sex person, or sex woman, or <laughs> fertile woman, uh, pregnant, if they want to have, if the couple wants to have a kid. God damn it. And we follow this this woman uh, off Fred. I can't like I don't I don't know why the naming schemes are like this, but basically this is how uh, my English teacher described it. Basically, in the society, uh, because the with the oh, come the fuck on, don't angle yourself like that, you piece of shit. Anyways, so uh, basically, when you when the wo when one when a woman is assigned to a couple to have a kid for them, their the first part of their name is given from the last name or the first name of the man, and um, or whatever the married couple's name is, which I assume is just the uh, male last name. Of the guy in the relationships, because you know, a lot of women take uh, take the guy's last name. That's just how it's been. So if you're a feminist, which I doubt <laughs> that you're watching this video, if you're a feminist or an SJW or whatever, let them have it. Just just let people do what they want. Okay, shitheads. Anyways, um, so uh, yeah, basically. The man in the relationship has to get the the woman as a sign to them pregnant and uh, hopefully to have a kid. And uh, I don't know. It's it's speculative fiction at best. Just the way that the society rolls. I doubt that in real life that the feminists would be right and we'd we'd return to a patriarchy if forced. I don't know. 
There definitely be. There's definitely like there still is uh, gender roles in society. You can't not say that. But um, more and more as the years go by, uh, freedoms are given to uh, you know the the female gender. So the female sex. So I don't know. Like, there's literally, there was literally a fan of Steve Shives, who, by the way, feminist. Steve Shives is a feminist, the fan was a feminist, whatever. Um, literally trying to argue that there is still a patriarchy in America. I don't see it. I really don't. Like, maybe in the 50s and 60s, but after, after feminism started, a lot of lines started being blurred more quickly. You know, then again, feminism started in like the 20s, but it really got going in like the 60s. So, yeah. But, uh, let's see. Um. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that guy was trying to. Part of what he was arguing about, which, by the way, you can see this comment thread if you want on the Bible Reload. It's it's one of their videos with Steve Shives from back in like 2014. It's the the dinosaur one. If you search Bible Reloaded Steve Shives, it's the chick track that they read with him, where it's about the dinosaurs dying. I mean, the last dinosaur is what it's called. Uh, I could be wrong, but just go search it up for yourself. Uh, and it's the, it's a, it's in the comment thread for their comments on their own video where they say Steve used to be funny, consider this his eulogy or something like that. And, uh, I don't give a two shits. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so this guy trying to argue that there is a patriarchy he doesn't really give any solid evidence or anything this guy even with our asking him to he doesn't really give any solid evidence as to why he thinks that there's a patriarchy but uh it's like feminists you know they don't really need evidence they just need to say shit and they they expect people to fall in line Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, trying to argue that there's a patriarchy in the United States still, uh, pretty, pretty much impossible, to be completely honest. Because there's just a lot of shit that's, um... There we go. So yeah, you can you can be a feminist, you can be an SJW, do whatever you want. Don't be a dick, don't be a bitch, don't be just an asshole cunt of a person. You know, just just be a, just be a good person. Believe whatever the fuck you want, just be a good person. I don't care if someone wants to be an SJW or a feminist or a fucking Christian or religious in any sense. Don't be a dick about it, or even a Trump supporter. Don't be a dick about it. Don't be a bitch. Don't be an asshole. Don't be anything like that shit. Don't be just a bad person, you know? Just believe what you want to believe and be fucking happy, you know? That's the problem. That's one of the problems with society. No one can be fucking happy anymore. And that's, that's just fucking depressing. You know, I'm fucking Donald Trump. Fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, 
or just fuck that fuck his policies and what he stands for just the fact that i get what his maybe intention was with what he said towards the the charlottesville stuff but it's just i don't know dude i really don't you can't really defend him anymore or at least it's getting very hard for you to defend him if you do defend him Seriously, he was basically trying to blame the left for what happened in Charlottesville when it was white nationalism that did it. It's just like, uh, Trump, not the fucking time or place, bud. He's seriously trying to make his side look better. And it's just like, we get it, it's the extremists. Just come out and denounce them. He had a glorious opportunity to denounce them, too. And he he dropped the ball entirely. Oh, my God. I'm sorry to get into this. I really am. I did not intend to. Ugh, politics. Politics is seriously goddamn depressing right now. So, let's see. Okay, I'm supposed to be in here. Yeah, no one can be happy. So they have to go out, bother other people, and make them depressed. Donald Trump is basically the male, uh, right-leaning Anita Sarkeesian. That's as best as I can describe him. You know? It's just like, you can't really blame the left for what happened in Charlottesville. You really can't. The city or town itself voted to take down the statue democratically. Unfortunately, no one likes uh, the democratic process unless it works for them. I don't know. So... Here's the question, how was I supposed to do this in six minutes? Because I don't know. Obviously speed running, but whatever. I'm sorry to get into politics here, I really am. But I did mention with the um first Assassin's Creed game playthrough. <laughs> That the guy who was continually saying, uh, in these troubled times we live in, sounds exactly like Donald Trump. It is really interesting that they decided to stick this in the middle of the Middle East uh, during an Ezio game. I am Ezio Alditore. Or Auditore. Da Firenze. Firenze. How are you pronounce it?
Also, just to say, cultural appropriation is not a thing anymore either. If it is, it's very minute. Maybe not minute is the right word, but this is very, very small amounts. Someone on Kanzenshu literally tried to... I don't know if he was trolling or whatever, but he was pretty much trying to say that anime dubbing is cultural appropriation, which... the guy, I think I mentioned this before, or at least I did in videos where I didn't upload. The guy literally tried to say that anime dubbing is cultural appropriation, but he's on a... He was doing that on a... on a dub thread on Kanzenshu, the world's biggest Dragon Ball. Uh, forum, and then, uh, as far as I know, he goes on places like Reddit and defends the Naruto dub, which, by the way, the Naruto dub isn't actually that bad. I, I will say that. The translation is pretty good. The acting, pretty good. I would say a lot of the casting choices, decent. That I've heard. Um... But, yeah, hypocritical-ass guy. You held fire in your hand, old man. It should have been destroyed. Destroy the only thing capable of ending the Here's the thing I don't get. Why didn't they upgrade the flashbacks? Never. Forgive me for this, mentor. To but the apple corrupted you. And through you, it would have corrupted too. us. For us to live, you had to die. Because, I mean, they're kind of disconnected. Is it truly over? Is that sorcerer dead? He was no sorcerer. Just an ordinary man in command of illusions. Have you prepared the pyre? I really I wish he did have his original voice, just I'll with the accent. Because Some of the men will not stand I agree that his original voice did sound cool. The, the voice actor did sound Let cool. Let me handle it. But it was just the accent. The accent made no sense with the dialogue written. You know what I mean? Are you fit to travel? Well enough. Yes. I asked Malik to ride to Jerusalem with news of Al Mulim's death. Would you ride to Acre and do the same? Of course. So much confusion. What is happening? Oh. I am so glad that they did this because there wasn't much closure for that game. My mind was clear, but my body. It would not move. Was our mentor the cause of this confusion? Or for the first game believe. after this. For Altair, it was just for uh, Desmond a little bit. What has happened here? Our mentor deceived us all. The Templars corrupted him. Where is your proof? Walk with me, Abbas, and I will explain. And if I find your answers wanting, I will talk. Until you are satisfied. Do you remember the artifact we recovered from Robert de Saab in Solomon's temple? The artifact you were sent to retrieve, but others delivered? Yes. It is a Templar tool. The Apple of Eden. It can conjure illusions and control men's minds. A deadly weapon. And you believe Al Mualim fell under its spell? I do. Today he used the apple to enslave Masyaf. You saw that for yourself. I I'm glad I played through the first game, I actually, so I at least Listen, know the context Abbas, of this. The apple is safe in Al Mulin's study. You know. When I'm finished here, I will show you all I know. Ah, great! They're gonna light him on fire like a time lord, or or a Viking, either way. Because you know the series six of Doctor Who. If you have not seen it, you're not missing no. much. Not really a good series, I but know that he you know. Return. But this is not our way. To burn a man's body is forbidden. It's, uh, it's okay. He'll Some good episodes, out. but not a lot. This body could be another one of Al Mulim's phantoms. I must be certain. Nice. All your life, you have made a mockery of our creed. 
You bend the rules to suit your whims, while belittling and humiliating those around you. Restrain him! Did you not hear him? Al Mualim is bewitched. Ah! <laughs> it is on, buddy. Ah! Come on. I will do anything. Just let me go. No need to kill me. Only we could be friends. And you can just let me go. No. Ah. I will do anything. Just let me go. Stay away from me. Do not take a hole. May I just bring up that in Assassin's Creed 2 they didn't do anything with uh, the Altair ghosts. Or ghost. But here they did. What did I tell you, Altair? Like Abbas, stop! What did Playing you think with would happen? Find when you murdered your beloved mentor! You loved Al Mualim less than anyone! You blamed him for all your misfortune, even your father's suicide. My father was a hero! This is not the time to quarrel over the past. We must decide what to do I with that weapon. I would say love if they remade the first Whatever game. Just with a bit more of combat system you from later are games not worthy to wield and it. subtitles. No man is. It is beautiful, is it not? Here's the thing. How did he get the apple? That's my question. What am I supposed to do?
Oh my fucking god. Um. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have... I'm just looking this shit up. Really quick. Here's the thing, why is the full sync still failed if I died? I think it- I th really do think it should reset. When that shit happens. Is YouTube's fucking player taking so long? Oh, he's right in there. Okay. Oh my fucking god, Altair. <laughs> fucking tool. Get up there. What was it? Are they dead? Forgive me. I did not know. Have you anything to teach us? Us all to ruin. Yes. Huh, <laughs> he only has the one. Altair, barely 26 and already a Grandmaster in command of a divided order. How does one cope with such responsibility and unlimited power? Unlimited power! Ah, uh, episode 3. You are only good in the sense that you were the least shitty prequels movie of <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, man. I've made the acquaintance of an Ottoman prince named Suleiman. He's a clever young man, with a fortitude uncommon for his age. On his suggestion, I will be investigating some wayward Janissaries who may be in league with the Templars. With luck, they will lead me straight to the core of the Templars' leadership. Meanwhile, the Venetian Sophia Sartor continues to help me find the hidden Maziav keys. She is a diligent woman, full of passion and vigor, and I enjoy her company immensely. But I dare not tell her the purpose of my stay here, nor of my true vocation. 
Those who do not volunteer in our struggle should not be forced to fight it. And that's why we need to get rid of the draft, people. Or it should be optional for both genders. Yeah. Heir to the Empire! Alright guys, I'm gonna pause here and continue in the next one.